Okay. Um, this class, today's class is going to be about friendship. Friendship is very important. Uh, friendship, different type of friendship can determine what will be your marriage outcome, what will be your standpoint in life. Okay, uh, different situations based on your marriage because the Bible tells you and thou would just get a friend first prove them. That's how you get a spouse. You prove them to see what kind of qualities, uh, qualities that does that person have. Like for instance, a man that wants a woman. Uh, does she want kids in her life? Is, is she a, a God-fearing woman? Or vice versa, uh, the woman, the man. Does he want kids? Does he fear God? Okay, and based on the friendship between a brother and a brother, or a sister and a sister, it can determine uh, your outcome of life. If they are, are they are, um, exhorting you, or approving you to, uh, to make sure you do good and, and success, as far as keeping God's commandment, make sure they keep you on your, your toes about uh, what? If you happen to fall, are they reproving you in that? Okay, because to have a person, to call a person a friend is a heavy term, a heavy term. Okay, you oftentimes you read when God called Abraham his friend. That term, that couldn't, that shouldn't be given to anybody uh, like them. But what is a friend? How do you get friendship? How do you prove a friend? What are these things? How do these things come about? So that's what today's topic is going to be about. So, I want to say something. So on, on that note, being that you said what you said, I want to say is that it's in all of our best interests that. All of friendships are based on the scriptures. Uh, a lot of times people will fuse what you feel for somebody in here with it meaning something. It doesn't mean nothing to God. It means nothing. All relationships, all of our relationship is based on this. Husbands and wives, parents and children, friends, all of it should be based on this. If this is the source for everything, then it would be very easy on how to determine who a friend is. It would be very easy for cutting off people that's not good for you. Uh, once you step away from this and go into your own thoughts, that's when you let emotions get involved of how you feel. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm more geared towards the women because the women are, you're more emotionally into that, that zone where, you know, we got the same hair quality, so we got the same hair care treatments, and you know we like the same colors and stuff like that. You know, men are a little different, but um, it, it, it'll behoove you to really take notes and align yourself because we're talking about like the, like the captain was saying, this can in many cases determine uh, your outcome in life, especially when you come to spouses, especially with spouses, friends, like little different spouses, you kind of attach, but. Um, I've known people that have left the truth because they followed a friend. I've seen people do that. Leave because uh, they listen to their friend, their friend get in their ear and keep on murmuring or whatever they're doing and they get caught up into the, into the conversation and not basing it on fact. All right, Captain, go ahead. So this, I want to put a definition of, of a friend because I said that that's a term that shouldn't be given lightly. Okay, a friend, Let's see the definition on this. I can't even hardly see it. Uh, I'll read it for you. Uh, friend, a person whom one knows and with whom one has a bond of mutual affection, typically exclusive of sexual or family relations. That's definition number one. Okay, I got another one here. I want to read this one. This one uh, goes into a lot. It says, friend, a person I want to read the second. A person who uh, helps or supports someone or, or something, such as cause or charity, one attached by another, by affection or esteem, acquaintance, one that is not hostile, hostile, one uh, one that is of the same nation, a party, or group. I like that definition. <laughs> I like that. Uh, I'm sorry. I want to, you, you must have missed something in there. You, you, glazed, you just glazed over it. But that was bad. Yeah, this was a this is dictionary? You get it? it says, friend, one of the same nation. Damn. I can't the white man said that. <laughs> it says, friend, one of the same nation party or group. So, no. 
your homeboy Shane, who you went to uh, kindergarten where you played basketball with, and his father Eden Mike, no, he can't not be your friend. Uh, Becky Sue, who you and her were in the Girl Scouts together. No, she cannot be a friend. Okay, let's go. Hmm. That's okay. a happy definition. Matter of fact, the example that we about to read later is going into that on why your friend should be of your own nation. Because, just think about that too. Let me, let me just ponder on that real quick. Think about that too. Why a, a friend could be somebody outside of your nation. When you read about how God set up the nations, um, Jacob and Esau, he said that, that they should be separate from thy bowels. I mean, two different mannerisms. Certain things we can relate to, so-called white people can't relate to, like the atrocities that our people been through, how we're oppressed in the ghettos. You can't talk about that with him, because he's not on that type of level. He wouldn't understand it. So that would be, that would be a friend at a miss right there. He wouldn't understand it. So when you go and talk about your oppression, he said, man, just get over it. We all friends. I'm your friend. Don't worry about it. all white people. I don't feel that way. No, it, there's a difference set between you two. That's why I said a, a friend is somebody of your own nation. They can relate to what you're going through. But I want to read this uh, scripture. Go to the book of Ecclesiastes. Let's go get into it. Ecclesiastes in the Bible, chapter 4, verse, uh, get verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 4 verse 9. This is why it's good to have friends. Two are better than one. The scripture says two are better than one. Read on. Because they have a good re reward for their labor. And what is that reward? Read on. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. That's the purpose of a friend. One that you can consult with in wise counsels. If you fall, that one will lift you up based on he, his a relationship with you. He knows what kind of uh, uh, shortcomings you have. He's, based, he's, he's able to lift you up based on those things he knows about you. Okay, only a friend can do that. Okay, but what we're going to get into, can you just say that to any, anybody that you are in? Um, matter of fact, I'm not going to jump the gun. I'm, I'm trying to stay on top of it. Remind me to stay where I'm at. Uh, read verse 9 again. Two are better than one because they have a good reward uh -huh. for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. The one will lift up his fellow. Read on. But woe to him that is alone. But he... woe unto the person that is alone, that don't want friends, that's not showing himself friendly. Woe unto him that is alone. Read on. When he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. He hath not a person to lift him up. That's why it's important to have a friend. Or in other words, you hear uh, the term the, uh, counselor. Friend and counselor, those two run hand in hand. Friend and the counselor. It says, woe unto him that is alone when he falleth. Uh, he, he hath not another to lift him up. That's why it's important to have somebody as, as of the like mind so they can remind you this is what you're supposed to be doing because if we, if we rely on ourselves, we'll be here forever falling in sin because our mind can convince us of some, of some evil. That's why it's important to have a friend, but knowing what type of friend you have is important. Knowing what your relationship is based on is important. If your friendship is based upon gossiping, that's not a friendship. If it's based upon lies, like, you, like back in the world, a lot of our friendship was based on what we like doing that was evil in the world. And we come to find out, we, a lot of y'all been burnt by that. Because see, our friendship was based on something negative. So now coming to this truth, it said a friendship is good, but knowing what it's based upon is even better. Mm, yes, sir. Uh, let's go real quick. Oh, well, finish your thought on this. I don't want to take you off of it. Uh, that was it on that. Now, from here, I'm going to say, uh, uh, Ecclesiasticus 6 and 7. That's 6 and 7 or 17? 6 and 7. Okay. Were well, you going to post 17? Uh, 6 and 17? Yeah. No, I don't have that here. All right, so let me read that first. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 6, verse 17. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. So the scripture says, Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So if all of, his, if all of us in here fear the Lord, 
we will direct our friendships aright. Our friendships, you know why I'm saying this for? Because uh, I was talking to a sister and uh, one of her good friends, another sister of truth, um, uh, she knew was off. And she was never able to really tell her because she was afraid that she gets upset. And I was saying, I said, you don't direct your friendship aright. If you got a friendship with somebody, you should be able to talk to them openly without the fear of them getting upset. I could care less if you get upset with me. It don't mean nothing to me, just be upset. If we friends, we'll be cool afterwards. But she was afraid because she was afraid of her response. That's why I said women work differently. The scripture says, read it one more time. Whoso feareth the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. So if you fear God, you're going to be observant on who you hang out with. Here's an example. Finish that. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Your friend is going to be just like you. People, the scripture says, um, every beast consorteth with its own kind. Meaning, if you got a friend that is a brawler, more than likely, you are a brawler. If you got a friend that's a drunkard, more than likely, you're a drunkard. Crackheads hang out with crackheads. Hoes hang out with hoes. Thieves hang out with thieves. So you can kind of mirror who you are by the friend you have. So if people have issue with that person, or meaning that person got something wrong with their spirit, it's a very good likelihood that either you have it or you on the road to having those things. You're gonna pick up those attributes. So read it one more time. Whoso fears the Lord shall direct his friendship aright. For as he is, so shall his neighbor be also. As he is, so as his neighbor will be. As he is, so shall his neighbor be also. Watch this. Jump up, verse 16. Verse 16. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. And they that fear the Lord shall find him. You know why you're going to find him? Because you fear God. And with wisdom, with understanding and applying of God's commandments, you're going to be to discern between right and wrong. You're going to learn this truth, brothers and sisters. Some people you just got to cut off. That's even in this truth. You got to know this ain't good for my spirit. Wish the best. I'm like that. You all know, you all see something, I get the point, I'm like, I'm not messing with that person. Nah, they the truth. Okay, whatever, but stay arm's length because I can't deal with you on a certain level. Not that if they come to me as a brother, I won't help them, but to involve them in my everyday life and get caught up in everyday life, sometimes they BS will weigh you down in their garbage. I don't know if you've ever been there, but I've been there already. So I, I, I'm quick to turn switches off and on. I know how to fade people out real quick. That's not good and conducive for me. That doesn't mean I'm not going to deal with them like a brother, but friendship is different. We all could be acquaintances, but a friendship is a blessing of God. And as the, I, I'm assuming while he goes through the class, the captain, we're going to touch upon that. But watch what it says. Noth, uh, what verse was that, 14? 14. It says, a faithful friend is a strong defense. No, it wasn't a book. 16. 16. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. A faithful friend will be there to heal you. They'll be there to tell you that you're doing something wrong. Not just agree with you. I hate people who just agree just to be agreeing. Say what you see. A faithful friend will be the medicine to you. So, judge this with your friendships. I can't tell that person something, then you know, you're not setting your friendship all right. Wisdom ain't moving you. Because you're worried on how they respond. How they, how they, no, you're worried about their response to you telling them. It says, a faithful friend is a medicine of life. Um, it says, and they that fear the Lord shall find him. So if you can't find a faithful friend, the scripture saying you don't fear God. That means wisdom is not moving you to find a friend. You found a friend like you sisters, oh, because you all tie your head coverings the same way. 
whatever stuff. And you guys, you find friends because you all have similar interests outside of this truth. It means nothing. I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say it slow. All of our relationships in here, this is the reason why. That's the reason why I know any of you is because of this. That's how I know you. And that's where it's always going to stay. It's never going to move out of here. So if anybody want to roll with me, stay in this. Then we cool. You don't want to do this? Mm. Bye. And it should be the same way about me. You should feel like that about me too. That's what keeps everything healthy. No one thing, it ends when this is not being applied. If you think like that about me and I think like that about you, good. We got a good friendship. Uh, read verse uh, 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 7 If thou wouldest get a friend prove him first Read and, on. and be not hasty to credit him If thou wouldest get a friend prove him first and be not hasty to credit him Hold this real quick um, Jump to We're going to come back to this Jump to uh, chapter 31 Chapter 31, verse uh, 37, excuse me. Ch chapter 37, verse 1. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 37, verse 1. Mm -hmm. Every friend saith, I am his friend also, but there is a friend which is only a friend in name. Read that again. Every friend saith, I am his friend also, but there is a friend which is only a friend in name. See if somebody can answer what this is talking about. What I want to say is this. It says, there's a friend which says, I'm his friend also, but there is a friend which is only a friend in name. Let's see if somebody can get in. Uh, Jude, what is this talking about? What is this saying? Um, you have people, you have friends that uh, all they just here to say they were friends, but when it comes to a, a certain situation where you need some help, they're not here. They don't want to help. Okay, they, they just, they talk to you, but when you're in trouble, they leave you. So a friend cannot be based on, yeah, he say he's my friend. Yeah, that's my friend. It can't be based off word of mouth, just because he says, yeah, you're my friend. That's what the scripture is going into. You can't call somebody a friend just because they come to meet you and say, yes, I am your friend. A friend goes deeper than that. As we read on, it says, you have to, going back to what we just read, it says you have to prove a friend. A friend can only be known in adversity. The scripture tells you a friend cannot be known in pros uh, 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 posterity. So what's the word? Prosperity. Prosperity. Because some friend is only a friend in his own occasions. That's why the scripture uh, it, it makes reference to proving a friend. Go back to that real quick, chapter 6, verse 7. Ecclesiastes, chapter 6, verse 7. If thou wouldest get a friend, prove him first. Prove him first. And be not hasty to credit him. And be not hasty to credit him. Okay, now go, go from that book to the book, uh, chap, same, chap, same book. Go to chapter 8, verse 18. Ecclesiasticus, chapter 8, verse 18. Do no secret thing before a stranger. Now I want to touch on this word right here. This stranger is going to go into the exact same thing we just read back in uh, uh, Sirach chapter 37 verse 1. A stranger can also be that same, a uh, stranger can also be that, per that same person that told you he was your friend. I'm going to explain that. Read that again. Do no secret thing before a stranger. Because a lot of us may think, what is a stranger? A stranger, that's somebody outside of this truth. A stranger can be right up in here. A stranger can be right up in here. The same person, people that you keep in your circle with that inside the school can be a stranger. Based on, you don't know that person. That's why the scripture says you have to prove them first. I'm going to prove that. Who is a stranger? Let's go to the book of uh, Numbers chapter 1 verse 51. Because a lot of times you read stranger, it's not based on talking about somebody you don't know. You don't know their name. You don't know where they come from. A stranger is a person that you don't know personally. This is an example. Numbers chapter 1, verse 51. Numbers oh, chapter 1. Let me get that with you. Okay, go ahead. Numbers chapter 1, verse 51. And when the tabernacle setteth forward, 
the Levites shall take it down. It says, when the tabernacle set forward, set it forward, the Levites shall take it down. Read on. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, mm -hmm. the Levites shall set it up. Read on. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Who is the stranger? That's the question. Who is the stranger? Uh, let me get somebody to answer this. Jack Kim, who is the stranger? Who is the stranger? Um, shall I set it up and the stranger that come at night shall be put to death. Um, in this context, I would say it would be the other nations. Nope, nope. Somebody else. Ruben. Uh, the stranger will be one of your own nation. Okay, so explain it. Do, do a little bit more to explain on it so somebody else can get it. Of one of your own, own nation. Uh, what was going on? Explain it. Explain what you just said with the scripture. Why, why was he calling them a stranger? Uh, and I think at the top of the verse it say the children of Israel. No. I'm give you another try. Answer it again. Think about the question. Why is it making reference to the person? <clears throat> why is it calling this person a stranger? Think about what, what it just said in this verse. Can we read it one more time? Read it again for him, officer. And when the tabernacle set it forward, the Levites shall take it down. Stop. Oh, it's saying uh, the Levites, the Levites is, is, is one of your own nation. Okay. You know, it's part of the, uh, like you part of the 12 tribes, like uh, the blacks and Spanish, we still one nation. Okay. So it's saying like one of, one of, it might be a different tribe, but it's still in the same nation. All right, so now you got it. So now explain it again. Make it come together. I know you know what I'm asking you. It's, it's saying like this, like the stranger of your other nation is, is one of like one of the strangers of your own people. I'm saying it correct. <laughs> All right. So one of the strangers of your own people, right? So if I'm a so if I'm a Levite, and I go near it, am I a stranger? I'm just saying like. Even if like it's from your own nation, like one that don't believe, even the Levite. stranger, not a believer. Even the uh, Levite. Uh, read again. And when the tabernacle set it forward, the Levites shall take it down. And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. So it's. I'm thinking it's saying like, like, a, like it's saying like the strangers maybe from a different tribe, but the same nation, right? That's exactly what it's saying. There ain't going to be too much on it. That's exactly what it's saying. I know what you mean. I know what you're trying to answer. Let me get that. Okay, finish your thought. The stranger is, is within the nation of Israel. No other tribe of the nation of Israel couldn't touch that tent but the Levites. So without, the reason why I pulled the scripture, it says, uh, going back to Ecclesiasticus, it says, do no secret thing before a stranger, because a lot of times we, we refer this word to a stranger as somebody outside of the school. A stranger is a person that you have no relationship with, uh, no relations with, okay? Like, uh, just for an example, sister, I forget your name. Just for y'all an example, because I'm, I'm making reference to the sister side because this a lot of uh, what I'm going over, this stuff, we've seen this happen inside of school. She could be a strength to you regardless if you see her every Sabbath, y'all sit to, next to each other every Sabbath, based on if you don't know her spirit, and based on if you don't know her attributes and how she can help you in your life. She could be a stranger sitting next to you. That's what I, what I mean by this. It says, do no secret thing before a stranger. Let me say something real quick. Back to what we just read in Numbers, before you move on. Mm -hmm. um, when you read the scriptures, uh, and that's what it says, precept must be upon precept. Because you do have strangers of the other nations. Mm -hmm. But you have strangers of Israel also. Leviticus 25 is one place you found them. But I want to go back and read what you just read in Numbers. Was that 151? Yeah, Numbers 151, yeah. Numbers chapter 1, verse 51. And when the tabernacle set it forward, the Levites shall take it down. 
And when the tabernacle is to be pitched, the Levites shall set it up. And the stranger that cometh nigh shall be put to death. Right. Now watch this. Go from that to number 16. This precept will here help clarify. Number 16, verse 40. Watch this. Numbers chapter 16, verse 40. To be a memorial unto the children of Israel, that no stranger which is not of the seed of Aaron come near to their offer to near to offer incense before the Lord. Stop. So the stranger, none of them can offer an offering of incense other than coming from the seed of Aaron. So any other tribe would have been considered a stranger if they offered offerings. Example was Saul. That was not his office. So he was a stranger. He was of the nation of Israel, but it wasn't for him to do. Everybody understand that? Yes, the reason why I want to explain that for because when you read the other scriptures in the Bible, they do refer to the other nations as strangers also. That's why it says precept must be a part of precept. Uh, so what, what the captain was saying was correct. Do nothing before a stranger doesn't mean somebody that's um, that you don't know because you think they didn't know other Israelites that was coming to the temple. They knew them. Yeah, I mean, you went to the temple at least once a week you was there. Right. They knew who the people were. But you still was a stranger because that you couldn't do that. So amongst us, uh, you would, well, go ahead. We're going to get to it. It's going to come up again in the class as we go. That's an excellent precept. So that's what the stranger was referring to in that text, 51 and 51. So they could be of the same nation but still be strangers. Like I was saying with the, the, for an example, you come into next, you come into the Sabbath, Sabbath after Sabbath, you sit next to the same person. Y'all can still be strangers based on not knowing each other's spirit or have not having a relationship with one another. That's why it's important to say, uh, important to when you get a friend, you prove him first. Okay, it says, do no secret, uh, read that again, uh, Ecclesiastes 8 and 18. Ecclesiastes 8, 18. Read that again. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 18. Do no secret thing before a stranger. Uh, do no secret thing before a stranger. Read on. For thou knowest not what he will bring forth. Read on. Open not thine heart to every man. That's the point I want to get to. You don't open your heart to every man. Because it might he might appear, or she or he might appear as a friend because you see them. But that don't mean they're a friend. A friend just say I'm a friend in word. You have to prove this person. Open up your heart, telling them all your downfalls and all your weakness, and then you find out this person betrays you in the end. You find out he had a uh, he or she had a gossiping spirit, and when they come out, they turn out to be the devil. They betray all your secrets before the congregation because you thought they were your friend. They were a stranger. You did not know them. That's why it's important. That's why we must prove a friend. Okay, we're supposed to have a relationship with everybody in here. We're supposed to get to one, know one another. And now, once again, our relationship should not be a, uh, based upon negativity. It should be based upon God's laws. That's how we met one another in here. Based upon God's laws that we, we're proving one another. So, um, let's move on from there. Uh, let me get... Uh, let me get... Ecclesiastes 37, verse 12. Matter of fact, hold that real quick. We're going to come to that. Give me Sirach chapter 6, verse 5. How do you get a friend? Sirach chapter 6, verse 5. Mm -hmm. Sweet language will multiply friends. So based on how you get a friend, it says sweet language will multiply friends. Read on. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. And a fair speaking tongue will increase kind greetings. A person that's sitting in the corner every Sabbath and wondering why nobody comes to talk with him is because you're not showing yourself friendly. The Bible says in order to, sh to get friends, multiply friends, you must show yourself friendly. That's how, once again, we got to portray ourselves. Nobody should be coming here, nobody knows that person's name. Oh, I just see him every Sabbath, he sits in the back of the class. Everybody should know each other by naming them, shouldn't they? I know my memory is shot sometimes. I can't remember my brother's name, but we should have some type of relationship with one another. 
We're family. Let's all remember that. Let's all remember that. Read that again. Sweet language will multiply friends. Sweet language is what? The Bible. Once again, there's no lies in that. If you and your friend, y'all relationship, every time y'all coming around each other, your conversation is about what another person does in his life, and there's no correction that you have given that brother or that sister, but you're talking about it with your so-called friend, you know for yourself, y'all relationship is based upon gospel. It's based upon evil. Okay, give me the, give me the scripture real quick. Give me a book of uh, Ecclesiastes 21, 25. That's the reason why I'm going over this, because this happened. Like I said, this happened in the church and it was evident before everybody. Some of y'all might not be privy to it. So, uh, Ecclesiasticus. Those of you who know what I'm talking about, that's an example. Ecclesiasticus chapter 21, verse 25. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. Here's one of those telltale time, signs to see what, what your relationship is based upon. Read it again. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. Every time y'all come together and you see your, your conversation is based upon somebody else, Bas basically, y'all relationship is based on talking about people. Gossip. Read that again. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. And another man's household pertain not unto you. Read on. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. But of such, but words of such as have understanding is weighed in the balance. Okay. Um, give me a uh, Sirach chapter thirty-seven, verse twelve. Now. Ecclesiasticus chapter thirty-seven, verse twelve. But be continually with a godly man. But be continually with a godly man or friendship with a godly man. Read on. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments of the Lord. Because we all assume that we are one another. Keep, uh, we are assume that we're keeping God's commandments. But have that brother been proven whether or not he's been doing it? That's up to your discretion to see if, so, if that's so. It says be continually with what, what, with what? Read on. Be continually with a godly man uh -huh. whom thou knowest. Whom thou knowest. Do what? Keep the commandments of the Lord. Uh-huh. Whose mind is according to thy mind. Whose mind is according to thy mind based on God's words. Read on. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. And will sorrow with thee if thou shalt miscarry. He's for thy purpose. He's able to lift you up in the word of counsels. Be continually with a godly man whom thou knowest. Whom thou knowest. To, uh, to, to keep the commandments. Now. Uh, let's go to uh, on that note. It says, "Whom thou knowest to keep the commandments, whom thou knowest, you know that he keeps the commandments." Now, how would you know somebody keep the commandments? Well, because they read the Bible, because they got fringes on. That don't mean they keep the commandments. How would you know who I am outside of here? You just see me here reading a bunch of scriptures and reading a bunch. That don't mean we keep the commandments. You would have to know the person. You have to see how he operates. That's what I do. I look at the Bible, and I look at you, and I look at the Bible, I look at you, and I see if you mesh up to what the Bible's saying. Do you, that takes time to do that. Anybody can put on a show. Anybody can be whoever they want to be for two, three hours every Sabbath. Anybody could be that. But it says, whom thou knowest. You got to know for certainty. I know this person keeps the commandments because when something happened, I watched their, them apply it more than one time. When correction came, I watched them listen and humble down. I watched them regain themselves. I watched how they apply what they teach or what they say. That takes time. That does not happen overnight. So you cannot establish what the Bible defines as a friendship in a couple weeks, months like that. You can never do that. It's impossible. That's impossible. Real quick, I want to read something uh, uh, because uh, you said something earlier. Um, uh, the scripture prior to that. Uh, what was it again? Um, the lips of talkers. Please, yes. Because, uh, 21. Let, I want to go back here real quick. 21 and 25. Um, 
yes, yes. Ecclesiastes chapter 21, verse 25. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. <laughs> yeah, read on. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. Read. The heart of fools is in their mouth, but the mouth of the wise is in their heart. There's so much right here. There's so much right here. This is the talk. The lips of talkers will tell such thing as pertaineth not unto them. In other words, you can't mind your business. You're talking about things that got nothing to do with you. I will say this. And um, I'm going to look at it from my perspective as a leader. Because I talk about all of y'all. You know, I talk about every last one. Well, 95% I'll be talking about y'all. And I talk to these brothers about it. Uh, but one thing I could say is that all conversations, for the most part, is constructive. Because we have to know these things are flat. Uh, there's nothing that I've ever said about any of you to them that I wouldn't say to your face. Those that know, you know. Uh, if me and Judas was having a conversation the other day, he was telling me something. I said, okay, now say that to that person's face. He said, yeah, I said, I, I, that's because not here. People be talking, I'd be like, yeah, I heard you say it to me now. Now I'm going to see if you're going to say it to their face. Which I know Judy will say it anyway. He'll say it anyway. Uh, that's how you know whatever's being said, ain't nothing wrong with it. Now there's times a certain thing that's personal, I understand that. But it says the talk, when you talk about people's business, it's always, if you're talking about it, how do you constructively help them through something, or you just talking? Why would I come to you about this person to talk to you, and you can't solve it? You have, you have no skills. You just running your mouth. That don't serve nothing. Telling him, you're trying to put a bug in your ear. You brothers better be smart. You sisters, I be listen. You, that one thing, I think the Lord don't have that spirit. You can't put a bug in my eye. I look at you, I'm like, mm hmm yeah, mm -hmm. the devil. <laughs> when you go to him, that could solve nothing. If there really was an issue, wouldn't you go to the people that you are, that you have a problem with? I mean, the Bible does say that, Matthew's 18. So it says, the talk, watch this. Um, verse 25. Oh, 25. Read again. The lips of talkers will be telling such things as pertain not unto them. That, that, that has nothing to do with them. But the words of such as have understanding are weighed in the balance. The one that have understanding, his words are weighed in the balance. That person knows, you know what? I'm not going to talk about this. He weighs in the balance what he's going to. Nah, let me hold up on that. That's a man of understanding. That's a woman of understanding. Read on. The heart of fools is in their mouth. But a fool will blurt out everything out of his mouth that has nothing to do with him or her. They just run their mouth. Ooh, girl, let me tell you about so-and-so. And so-and-so, -so. would you believe that? Okay, at the end of you telling me that, what's the point? Is there a solution to it? Oh, you just tell them to talk, right? <laughs> All right, fool. You just run in your mouth. Watch this real quick. Um, let's go. Let's read the New Testament. Um, uh, Timothy's captain. I apologize. Are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> That's why I don't go to camp with you. I told the captain teacher class, and I run in my mouth. Okay, I want to read three scriptures. First Timothy is a five. Watch this real quick. Mm. Start with verse 11. First Timothy chapter five, verse 11. But the younger widows refuse, for when they have begun to wax wanton against Christ, they will marry. So somebody, when you read the chapter, some uh, widows, sisters that husbands died, uh, single sisters, the older ones, you receive them and you take care of them over the age of 62, I think it is. The younger ones, it says that um, they're going to wax wanton. What does that mean, they're going to wax wanton, brothers? Say again? They're going to be horny. I wasn't going to use that word, but okay. Cool, that's the word. Uh, you all understand what that means. Wow, okay. 
Uh, let's stick with the word wax one. All right. Against Christ, they will marry. They will marry. But watch what it says. Read on. Having damnation, because they have cast off their first faith. Read on. Yeah, you read that? Well, I ain't going to say it. Read on. And withal, they learn to be idle, wandering about from house to house. Here's the key indicator. Idle time. Idle time. Nothing productive. On the phone. Texting. How does it move you forward? Now, mind you, everybody has a little conversation time. But when time is idle and nothing productive is happening, mm, 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 mm. going from house to house. And not only idle, but tattlers also and busybodies speaking things which they ought not. That's what we just read. We just read that. Now, I'm going to say this, sisters. A lot of times it happens with the women because you don't have a man in your life. Because if you had a man in your life, and not say all sisters without a man is doing this, please don't misinterpret, but you would have responsibilities. Like, you know, you gotta get his clothes ready, you gotta cook dinner, you gotta go get the kids, you know, whatever you gotta do. When a sister's got a lot of idle time, be careful. Be careful who you associate with. Two sisters with nothing to do, ooh, ooh. Read on. Verse 14. I right, will forget that. Uh, go from that to uh, Thessalonians. Three. Oh, I'm sorry, Second Thessalonians three. Now don't think it's just this is just women. You got men like that too. You got men as little busybodies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, mm, mm. Three and um, ten. Second Thessalonians chapter three verse ten. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. So when you read up above, it's talking about. Um, uh, what verse I want to start with? Verse 6. Now we command you, yes, let's read verse 6. Verse 6. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourselves from every brother that walketh disorderly. So the subject matter is the men. A man walking disorderly. A man walking disorderly, in this case, a man that refused to work and provide for his own. Now jump on down to verse 10. Verse 10. For even when we were with you, this we commanded you, that if any would not work, neither should he eat. That's the man. The any is the man. Read on. For we hear that there are some which walk among you disorderly, working not at all, but are busy bodies. These men are busy bodies. Nothing to do. So, uh, uh, to, and I'll read one more scripture after this, but to bring it full circle, a lot, you, you align yourself with people like this that's not doing anything, that has a lot of free time, it's going to be generally, more than likely, you're not doing anything. You got a lot of free time. And that's where the problem lies. You can look at their friends. Remember this old saying, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are? Right. Trust me. You know who my friends are. And you know who I am. You'll know them by their friends. Watch this. One more scriptures. I want to go to um, the book of Ezekiel. It's 31. Mm -hmm. 30. 30. Ezekiel chapter 33 verse 30. Also, thou son of man, the children of thy people still are talking against thee by the walls and in the doors of the houses and speak one to another, every one to his neighbor. So the, the Lord was told Ezekiel, Ezekiel, they talking about you. So I, I'd say this to you brothers that's in leadership positions, get used to people talking about you. This is part of the game. I'm so used at this stage again. I'm so desensitized by that. I was stung before. Real hard. I know Robbie know what I'm talking about. I was stung so hard and I got thick skin, but once I got stung so hard, I learned. I learned. People were talking about you. So, so read on. 
saying, Come, I pray you, and hear what is the word that cometh forth from the Lord. Ain't that the pistol right there? They're talking about you, but they come every week to come hear the word of the Lord from you. <laughs> You've got to be crazy. They're talking about you, but they'll still come. So what will happen here? You have people that will come here, they will talk about you, and still come for the word of God. That's a busy body. That's a toddler. Those are people you don't associate with. Secret come. That's what it says by the doors inside the houses. Today is text and cell phones. Psst, let me tell you something about it. I can't stand that nigga right there. Shalom, most high Christ, please. You all right? Sure. <laughs> Read on. Verse 31. And they come unto thee as the people coming. And they sit before thee as my people. He said, and they'll come and they'll sit before, before thee as my people. They got their pen out. They got all the three different color highlighters. They're just marking and they're like intensive and they go through right there, right in front of you. <laughs> yeah, you know. And they hear thy words, but they will not do them. And when they finish here, they highlight that set. I ain't listening to that nigga right there. The hell with him. So, what's that best place? <laughs> Read on. For with their mouth they show much love, but their heart goeth after their covetousness. With their mouth they show love, but their minds is someplace else. So these scriptures are here to give us to, to try to cast light to help, and I hope I didn't go too far off the track with you, uh, no, no, right but, on. but it's to cast light to help you align your friendships right. Align who you who you with. And I'm going to say this for a reason. There will come the time when the Lord will come and bring judgment on this earth. And those of us that escape out of here, that murmuring stuff won't work. You understand? When we come out of here, that murmuring stuff comes to an end. You murmur then, you get put to death. God is killing you. So it would behoove you learn on this side to rehearse a righteous act and learn how to line friends. Because I know in that day, if you're murmuring, I'm like this. Cool. You on your own. I wouldn't even, don't even finish your sentence. I'm out. I'm not, I'm not going to smile. Like, you know, sometimes somebody says something that's a little uncomfortable. You're like, yeah, because you don't want, you know, you just like, you don't want to say like, that's wicked. That's somebody did to me recently. What did somebody show me recently? I did it yesterday. Somebody told me a, 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 a joke. It was the end of it was was wicked, lascivious, something stupid. And instead of me just like just looking like a stupid, I went, mm, all right, and I just kind of smiled. I don't know why I did that for. Simple as I could be. Anyway, that's not the point. But that day, I will move back off of you. You bugging. Learn to align your friendships aright. Go ahead, Ken. Yes, I'm James real quick, three. James chapter three and verse two. And the scriptures I'm about to pull are for brothers and or sisters who have been in that spirit that murmur or talk about people that you um, are supposed to be holding up as friends, brothers, sisters. Read verse two real quick. James chapter three, verse two. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. It says, if any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man. Read on. And able also to bridle the whole body. Because being honest, every one of us are going to offend at one point, at one time. We're going to say something that we need not say. We're going to offend the person that we're supposed to care about. We all do it. So this is for the brothers and sisters that have done that. Don't get caught up in your mind thinking that, okay, this, this, this class is about me and I'm jacked up and that's it. It's a wrap. I'm the wicked one. Because there's, there's laws in this Bible to fix you. Go to Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha, chapter 19 and verse 13. Sirach, chapter 19, verse 13. Admonish a friend. It may be he hath not done it. So first off, when something goes down with our friends, we hear that we talk, that somebody's talking about us. I may have said something. It, first, it says first admonish the friend and make sure that that's the truth. Because a lot of times it'd be hearsay or you'd be, you'd be under some evil suspicion in your own mind and you think that 
your friend or somebody has it in for you. And instead, a lot of times what we do, instead of actually going to that friend or going to that person, we go to somebody else, like the elder was bringing out a minute ago. We go to somebody else and want to tell them about it. As if that's what's going to fix it. But the scriptures say what? Read that again. Admonish a friend. It may be he hath not done it. It may be that he or she have not done it or that they don't really feel the way that you're thinking that they feel. You just got some evil stuff going on in your own mind. Personal stuff. Read on. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. Or you admonish them, and if they have done it, at least give them a chance to know that that hurt me, that was wrong. Maybe they knew it was wrong, maybe they didn't. A lot of times when you put somebody on the spot and put everything in perspective for them, they can see, oh, okay, I'm jacked up, it was wrong. And give them the ability or the chance to fix it. If you really call that person your friend, if you're really serious in here, and we all should be serious in here. Read on. Admonish thy friend. It may be he had not said it. And if he had, that he speak it not again. Because sometimes, remember we just read in James, nobody's perfect. We all going to offend. We all going to slip at the tongue. It may be that that person really did say something about you. But admonish him first. Go to that person and give him a chance to apologize that he don't do it no more. And a lot of times you win a friend. You get closer to that person through doing that. You win a, a certain level of respect. Because the average person is going to come in that nigga spirit and be like, oh no, hell no, nah. you can't talk about me, I ain't black yet, son. We done seen some of that spirit in here before. Some people done shook it off, some people done shook up out of here. But read that again. Admonish thy friend, it may be he had not said it, and if he had, that he speak it not again. Admonish a friend, for many times it is a slander, mm -hmm. and believe not every tale. It says, for many times it is slander, but believe not every tale. Don't believe everything that somebody says something, says to you, because everybody's got a, a motive. Skip over to uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 22 and verse 21. Ecclesiastes chapter 22, verse 21. Though thou drewest a sword at thy friend. So this is for the person that actually offended your friend. If this might be about you, this class might be about you. And if it is, read that. Though thou drewest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not, mm -hmm. for there may be a returning to favor. It may, there's forgiveness. Amongst us, if anything, if nothing else, we better have a forgiving heart when we're dealing with each other. Right. Remember what Christ did for us. Remember how we've been living, how we came into this truth. Everybody comes from a different walk. Everybody comes from a different pile of BS. So we better be ready to forgive our brother, forgive our sister. If they put themselves out there like that, looking for forgiveness. We better be ready to admonish and look for forgiveness before we look for an enemy. Amongst each other, especially. Read that again. Though thou drewest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not. For there may be a returning to favor. Read on. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not. Why? For there may be a reconciliation. Except for upbraiding, Read. or pride, mm -hmm. or disclosing of secrets, or a treacherous wound, for 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 there, for for these things, every friend will depart. It's some things that we do. We get so far in the wickedness. It's some things that we do that you just ain't gonna be able to recover your friend. But remember, when you when we call ourselves being close to each other, you are gonna see. That's why it says for us to to. Um, a friend and to do that we got to be around each other you're gonna see certain attributes in certain people that you're gonna see where well, he got the he got the, the uh, ability to be shady or she got the ability to be shady so what we should do if we really want to be friends if we really want to be in love in here as a congregation is every time something comes up admonish him what was that you just said why'd you say that I feel like you offended me so we don't get to this point to where they do they do something so far left that it ain't no more friend, ain't no more friendship. We ain't cool ever again no more because we can't be like that in here. And I want to say something, very good precept. I want you to read that precept again because I want to, I, 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 I don't know, I don't think Captain will get through his class. <laughs> So it's still on the same time. Yeah, yeah, read that one. I, I don't know where we at, where we at? Uh, Sirach chapter 22, verse 21. 22. Hold on. Quote it again for me. Sirach chapter 22, verse 21. Read that again. Though thou drewest a sword at thy friend, yet despair not, for there may be a returning to favor, 
Right, you might be to fix it. If thou hast opened thy mouth against thy friend, fear not, for there may be a reconciliation. Right, because you can apologize. We don't. Except, except in these cases, for upbraiding, or pride, or disclosing of secrets, or a treacherous wound. These things can really destroy a friendship. A treacherous wound. I'm talking about amongst men. We friends. You're trying to hit another man's wife. Dude, I let you in my house eat my food. You sit here. You trying to press on my daughter. You trying to... Ah, oh, man. I'll be your brother, but all friendship is dead. Understand, friendship is a little different from what you're thinking friendship is. When we read... Remember it says... In, um, Saram Psalms 144 or uh, 133. Yeah. Somebody quote it real quick. Behold, good, right? Be, uh, thank you. Behold how good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious oil that ran down upon the bed. You want to go through that today? Yeah. No, I don't have that in there. Okay. <laughs> okay. That is something special. It's different from what you all call friends. What we call friends in this world is crack friendships. They're not real. They're not real friendships. We gotta learn how to align a friendship like how David and Jonathan aligned their friendships. Those things are not everybody. Remember, we're building a nation. You think when we come up out of here, we back in our lands and everybody's gonna walk through the streets, you're just best friends with everybody? No, that's not, that's not true. You're gonna be, shalom brother, shalom sister, you're gonna go about your day doing what you gotta do. You see them, they need help, you're gonna help them, but that don't mean they're gonna be at your house hanging out and whatever. It, that doesn't, no, we still got to grow into, we're growing into a nation of people. So not everybody's going to be at everybody's house. Big difference. So there's a certain move. It's saying that accept these things, the disclosing of secrets. Meaning you tell somebody, somebody something about you in confidence, personal. And next you know, they go out there and they put it out there. That friendship ain't going to be the same. You might, you still have to forgive them. You still may have to deal with them, but you ain't gonna be friends like that no more. You, know, you told everybody something that was personal, that you knew was personal. We're not talking about sin now. We're talking about something personal, personal. We're just gonna apply the laws of God and keep it, but there ain't no friendship there no more. No. <laughs> you understand? No. Yeah, it's just brotherhood. And, and, and we holding on by the, by the grace of Jesus with that. <laughs> Uh, except the upbraiding or pride or disclosing of secrets or a treacherous wound for these things every friend will depart well that would make sense come on partner you think I'm going to invite you back in my house again and sit down and you're going to eat my food after that are you serious nah hell no that friendship is over so now the question is what is friendship how do you define a friend? What we was going through, with all we've been going through today, you have to prove a friend. You don't let every man into your home. And for you single sisters, brothers, I'm, you know me, I change the gears. Brothers always want to share a word with you. Let me share what's seen in the scriptures. You need anybody to talk to, you can always come and talk, share this word of God with you. Man, listen, don't fall for that crap, please. That's the biggest game in the world, please. Prove a friend. You want to prove him? Prove him right here. Right here. Now let me... Uh, I, I, this has happened to the congregation again. Sister called me, told me, brother's texting her at quarter to twelve at midnight saying, sister, I need to talk. You want to go out and get something to eat? Yeah. No, nigga, I got to go to work in the morning, first of all. And why are you texting me these hours of the night? What the hell do you think this is? Who the hell eat at 11.45 and got to be at work in the morning? Uh, summertime, 6 o'clock, I got to digest that crap. Nah, that's game. That's game. Please. Quarter, 11, quarter at 12 at night, what you think it is? When we going to go get something to eat at that time? You want to talk to me? You can talk right now. Yeah, that's what the phone is for. But you got to see, see my face and talk to me? Yeah, yeah. You better prove a friend. Okay, so... Okay. Psalms 140, 133. Like Psalms chapter 133, verse 1. You says it's been not fought for that. I'm talking. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren 
to dwell together in unity. It is like the precious ointment upon the head. It says the friendship or brethren dwell together in unity. Now I'm going to use it here as a congregation. How good and how pleasant is for us as a body to dwell together in unity. One mind, one gold, to dwell together in unity. It's what? It is like the precious ointment upon the head. So watch what it says. That unity is being compared to the precious ointment. Let's explain that real quick. Exodus 30. And it's going to lead back to the friendship. It says that unity is like the precious ointment. Let's read about the ointment. Uh, 30, 25. Exodus chapter 30, verse 25. And thou shalt make it in oil of holy, holy ointment, an ointment uh, compound after the art of the apothecary. It shall be in holy anointing oil, and thou shalt anoint the tabernacle of the congregation therewith, and the ark of the testimony, and the table, and all his vessels, and the candlestick, and his vessels, and the altar of incense, and the altar of burnt off offerings, with all his vessels, and the laver, and his foot. And thou shalt sanctify them, that they may be most holy. Whatsoever toucheth them shall be holy. Do you understand? That oil that was made for the anointing, whatever it touched, was holy. So it's saying that that friendship is just like that. That brotherhood is just like that. Now what? Read on. Watch this. Verse 30. And thou shalt anoint Aaron and his sons, and consecrate them, that they may minister unto me in the priest's office. It says, and then you're going to pour that oil on Aaron and his sons and consecrate them. You know what it means to consecrate, to make holy, to make separate. So it's trying to tell you that everything else is there. But whatever that touches is special. Everybody understand that? That oil of a pocket there was a gift from God that they actually made the anointing oils. When you, when you use anointing oils back then, it healed the sick. So it was telling you that whatever that, that's why when, when they defiled the temple and the Feast of Dedication and we went back to reclaim it and rededicate it, we didn't throw away those, uh, the altar. We put it, everybody know what I'm talking about? If you don't, say you don't. Does, by show of hands, who doesn't know what I'm talking about? Okay. I don't want to go through all that. <laughs> Read in the pocket for the Feast of Tabernacle, I mean, Feast of Dedication, 2 Maccabees 1, 1 Maccabees 4, I believe it is. Um, yeah, 1 Maccabees 4, 2 Maccabees 1. Anyway, when we rededicate the altar after the Greeks uh, um, sacrificed swine's flesh on it, the altar was made out of stone. We wouldn't throw it away. We took it and we put it in a special place waiting for a prophet to come and tell us what to do with it. The reason why we wouldn't destroy it was because of what we just read right here. Because we knew that whatever that oil touched made it holy. Everybody understand that? Okay, so let's go back to um, Psalms 133. Psalms 133 verse 2. It is like the precious ointment upon the head that ran down upon the beard. Even the even Aaron's beard that went down to the skirts of his garment. It's saying that's how that that brethren, that friendship is. It's special, it's consecrated, it's different, it's not regular. It's not what we call friendship today. What we call friendship today is that daggone Kim Kardashian, Paris Hilton kind of fake. You're friends right now, but you know, you're not talking tomorrow or whatever. This kind of friendship was not even a lifetime friendship. It went beyond your lifetime. It went down to the children's of your friends. And we'll read about that today too. We'll see. Real friendships, I'm sorry to say, real friendship is that if I have a relationship with you and anything happens to you, 
I will raise your children as my own. Not, oh, honey, he's dead, man. Pour that drink from him. So where they going to? Where the kids going to? Send them back to their grandmama at the bingo hall. Nah. Nah, you're going to take care of them kids. And you're going to take care of his wife without trying to tap it. Well, sister, come over here. I know it's hard for you. Oh, you lonely now. Yeah, it's hard for me. It's hard for me, too. We both just, come here, let's cry together. Hey, watch this. Let me share that word with you. <laughs> you nasty, you nasty. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Um, read on. Verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. It says a friendship is like the dew of Hermon. Let's read this real quick. Hosea, the 14th chapter. Hosea, chapter 14, verse 5. I will be as the dew unto Israel. He shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. So the Lord said, I will be as the dew unto Israel. What does he say? I will be a blessing unto Israel. Remember before when the Lord allowed us the earth to be watered, it was water would do. So he said, I'm going to be a blessing unto you. He's saying, and in that blessing it says, I will be a to do unto Israel, he shall grow as the lily and cast forth his roots as Lebanon. Meaning his roots are going to run real deep. It's saying the friendship is like that. It's going to be a blessing and it's going to be strong, a strong foundation of a friendship. And it's going to grow. So friendships are supposed to really be founded on something more than just superficial BS. And two, friendships are supposed to grow. We had a, a, a while back, this congregation, um, a, a brother, Ephraim, my brother, that was with us. Um, and he came around, he, when he came, he was strong. He was on fire every week, him and his wife and his son. And I'm uh, yeah, no, no, not that, another one before that one. Yeah, another one before that. You know, Ephraim from crazy. Um, anyway, he's always asked me. Now, he's around for a few months. About six months now. At least six months. But he was with us. He wasn't like a fly by night. He's always saying, yo, can your son spend a night over, you know, with my son? I'm like, no. Well, his wife used to ask my wife, because, you know, they always go to the woman. And my wife came in, I said, no. And she, my wife was like, oh, but, uh, okay. I know she felt uncomfortable going back to tell the sister. I said, no. Well, you asked me a question. I mean, there's a yes or no for an answer. I don't know, you know, you asked me. So I said, no. And then she asked again, a couple weeks, no. And by the third time, I don't know if I told you, Kabash, this. Yeah, by the third time, I'm like, hell, you keep on asking me the same question. Same. Now I'm looking at you, first off, I don't know you like that. So what you come around? I don't know you like that. I've got your address. I've never been to your place. You disappeared the side of my kid be on some on some milk carton. I don't know you like that. And I don't feel comfortable telling people no. They anyway, the whole point, the brother bugged out, the older son was sniffing dog remains, thought it was coke. And that was in the paper. He's doing like 15 years right now. So the point is that we didn't establish no deep-rooted relationship. We wasn't knitted at the soul for me to be unlocking my life in with your life and playing sleepover. No, nah, hell no. None of you asked me that. What was I saying again? Then? Do. Oh, the do. Yeah, yeah, let's go back. Psalms chapter 133, verse 3. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion, for there the Lord commanded the blessing. Even life forevermore. He says, so he's saying, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious ointment that ran down upon the bear, upon Aaron's beard, down to the to skirts of his garment. It's as the dew. 
So those are two things that he identifies what a real brethren or friendship or unity will be like. How it's supposed to be. Let's read that in the scriptures. First Samuel chapter 18 verse 1. And it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. You, you understand that? We don't. And Jonathan loved him as his own soul. Now that's a friendship now. It says, and it came to pass when he had made an end of speaking unto Saul that the soul of Jonathan was knit with the soul of David. When you got two people and their souls become knitted, I'm talking about friendship, but husband and wives, we know they're supposed to be like that. Two shall be one flesh. But even with friends, souls knitted, it's beyond the physical. Is Yo, that's how somebody died for you. That's how somebody would lay their life down for you. Nobody gonna jump in front of no bullet for you and I don't know you. Like that. That's not fair. Everybody have those war stories in camp. Yeah, yeah, right. Not me. Terry, I'm not doing that. I'm not, don't get me. I ain't gonna run on you. I'll be there, but I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna jump in front of it for you. The next week you out in the club, you gave up on the truth. My life was in vain. Hell no. I gotta trust that. I know whatever happened, this man is good. I, I safely believe that there's nothing will pull him out this truth. I go jump in front of the bullet, die, get killed. And some stupid hoe pull you out the truth. And you back up there celebrating Easter. That is the hell no. My sons are. Second Samuels. For me to do that, I got to be. I got to love you. I got to love you. I can tell that straight. I'm not doing it. One twenty-six. Second Samuel chapter one, verse twenty-six. I am distressed before thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Stop. Read verse um, twenty-five. Verse twenty-five. How are the mighty fallen in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thy high places. I am distressed for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very pleasant hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. Do you understand what he's saying there? He's saying the love Jonathan, he had, Jonathan died. Now remember, well, well, the captain's gonna go into it a little bit afterwards, but Jonathan died. And David said that, yo, know, my love for Jonathan surpassed the love for a woman. And that's not no gay stuff. That's not what he's talking about. He looked at him like a brother. You can't get rid of a brother. You can always get another wife, but you can't get another brother. That's what he's trying to say. So past that, we was knit at the soul. Husbands and wives, you need to be like that, knit at the soul the same way. But that's true friendship. Watch this real quick. Second Samuel's nine. Look what happened. Jonathan is dead now, right? I'm, yeah, Jonathan is dead. Verse 1. Verse, yeah. Jump. Uh, 2 Samuel chapter 9, verse 1. And David said, Is there yet any that is left of the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake? Now, this is many years later now. David is king. He subdued the other nations round about. And now he's looking for the heir or the descendant of Jonathan. Jonathan been dead. Because of his relation with Jonathan, he said, listen, find me some of Jonathan's household. Read on. And there was of the house of Saul, a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David, the king said unto him, art thou Ziba? And he said, thy servant is he. And the king said, is there not yet any of the house of Saul? that I may show the kindness of God unto him. And Ziba said unto the king, Jonathan hath yet a son, which is lame on his feet. And the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king, Behold, he is in the house of Machir, the son of Amiel, 
in Lodabar. Then King David sent and fetched him out of the house of Machir, the son of Amiel from Lodabar. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold thy servant. And David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. So you, you see what he said? He found him. He restored all the land that was once Saul. Remember, Saul was uh, the wicked king that tried to kill David. And when David took over, David got all his land. He said, find me Jonathan. Rip, rip, I'm going to I mean, find me Bathsheba-theth. Bathsheba-theth. I'm going to restore all the land that was your grandfather's land. And not only that, you will eat at my table continually forever. Do you understand? Saul's land was in the land of Benjamin. David at this point was back in Jerusalem, in the, in the city of David. He told him, you don't go back home. That land is yours, but you can sit here at my table. To be inside, to sit at the table with the king, to be in his inner court, that's not a small thing. And all that was based on his relationship that he had with his father. Now that's friendship. That's knitted at the soul. One more. Go. So why did, why did David do that? Go to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel 20. First Samuel 20, verse 42. How many of y'all gonna take on somebody else's child and let them eat at your table continually for the rest of their life? How many of us are gonna go out and search out that child or any of his family members to show kindness unto them? Watch this. First Samuel chapter 20, verse 42. Uh, uh, verse 40. Verse 40. No, verse 41. Verse 41. And as soon as the lad was gone, David arose out of a place toward the south and fell on his face to the ground and bowed himself three times. And they kissed one another and wept one with another until David exceeded. So David came and saw him and he gave his... He, when it's a kiss, don't go with the gay stuff. Holy kiss. But he, he David bowed himself down to Jonathan because rightfully Jonathan was supposed to be the next heir to the throne Jonathan betrayed his father's trust to protect David knowing that David was going to take his place and be king over Israel now that's a friendship you know that you're about to give up your, your place as king to another man that ain't your blood and you had no problem with it. Read on. Verse 42. And Jonathan said to David, Go in peace, for as much as we have sworn, both of us, in the name of the Lord, saying, The Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. That's the reason why David went looking for him. He said, Let the Lord be between me and thee, and between my seed and thy seed forever. David remembered that. And David knew that he swore oath to him. That I will always be there. Or vice versa. For you and for your seed. That's when we read, Behold how good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity. It's like the precious way. Half of the, I'm telling you something, 99% of fake friendships out here is fake. If it's not, 100% of them is fake if it's not based on this. I'm not saying in here, I mean in the world. If it ain't based like this, it's fake. So it may, I hope that this gives you a different perspective on how you judge a friendship or who do you call a friend. When I hear statements like, oh, that's my best friend in the world, I just laugh. I said, no, that's not your best friend in the world. You're in the world. 
<laughs> that's your best. That doesn't make sense. That's my best friend in the world. No, you know, if your best friend ain't in the truth, you ain't in the truth. It's impossible. Can't two walk unless they be agreed. All right, Captain. I'm long-winded. Go ahead. <laughs> you got something for you. <laughs> Real quick, let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 6. <laughs> this is the reason I don't go to Capitol. I told you. That's why I don't. Certain um, attributes that you can um, tell within this friendship are a friend and a person. Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 6, <clears throat> read verse 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 8. For some man is a friend for his own occasion and will not abide in the day of thy trouble. That's why you gotta know what relationship is your friendship uh, based upon. Because some friend will be a friend in his own occasion, okay, and will not abide in the days of trouble. And we're gonna get different examples on that, but these are certain spirits that you can examine whether or not the friend that's calling you a friend falls within one of these categories. Read on. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. That's why we read earlier, you're supposed to prove a friend. If you have a friend that you, and you heard something, matter of fact, I'm gonna go back to it. Well, uh, before I forget it, go back to it. Um, go to Ecclesiastes 19, verse 13. Because uh, uh, believe it or not, this, uh, harking on what we said earlier, this actually happened in the congregation. And okay, this is uh, something that uh, some of y'all might have experienced at the old school. Uh, this scripture was pulled based on a situation that happened and it really turned out to be that that friend didn't really say it at all but being that that person was evil they spewed all their business that this sister had done told them that's why the scripture says do not open your heart to every man don't do that unless you, you know for sure that he's your friend because a friend is going to hold that secret dear to him Regardless if y'all have a fallout, a friend never meet a miss. That's what the scripture says. A friend never meet a miss. Now is that, let me, let me see that scripture real quick. A friend never meet a miss. I just had it earlier too. 40 and 6, I believe, 40 and 16. A friend never meet a miss. Uh, verse 23. 23? Mm -hmm. Okay. Ecclesiastes chapter 40, verse 23. A friend and companion never meet a miss. Now, is that saying that a friend and a companion would never go wrong? They would never have their differences? No, that's not what it's saying. Look up the word a miss. Get the definition of that real quick. A miss. A friend and a companion will never meet a miss. What is that saying? Let's get that definition real quick. Because they will always find some kind of faults. Because with two different spirits coming together, there's going to be some type of difference. Okay, so understand that. But what is this actually going into? A friend and a companion would never meet a miss. Got it? Uh, let's see. Ian, I can't see it. You have to read it. Uh, the definition, the first definition of a miss is in a mistaken way, wrongly, if you think he is guilty, you judge a miss. B says astray, something had gone amiss. Number two says in a faulty way, imperfectly. That bottom one is what I want. Uh, uh, number two, it says in a faulty, in a faulty way or imperfectly. A friend and a companion would never meet a miss. It would never find out to that situation or that friendship was based on something faulty or what was the other word you use or imperfect. Imperfectly, meaning. Everything that y'all, uh, everything that y'all discuss, it somehow got out to the congregation. Yeah, this is what we discuss. This is all a business. A friendship would never end. It should never end up that way if y'all were really friends. Because of a friend, if, if you if you actually told a friend, what was your, uh, what were your, say for instance, give an example, childhood troubles. Regardless if y'all meet a miss, nobody ain't gonna ever know that 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 actually you actually that person was uh, aware of what you went through in your childhood. They just understand that we have differences. I'm not gonna get angry and tell all this business now, or our business now, because that's a friendship. That person is gonna know that we're gonna meet at miss. Just like in a marriage, a, a, a man and a wife gonna meet at miss, okay? These things are going to happen. 
But what I'm saying by this is I want to lose my thought. Go back to Ecclesiastes. Okay, let's go back to that. Sirach chapter 19, verse 13. Mm -hmm. Admonish a friend. It may be he hath not done it. So don't be too hasty. It said, admonish a friend. It may have be that he have not done it. Read on. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. That he do it no more. This is how you're going to know a true friend. That he do it no more. But if you come to him and you approach him about, look, brother, I heard you say this and such and such. And he jump off the roof. That was in your friend from the get-go. This is how you're going to know a friend. And when you meet at adversity. That's how you're going to know each other's uh, tip, uh, uh, pressure. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, each other's uh, temperaments. Okay, temperaments. Read it again. Admonish a friend. Uh -huh. It may be that he have not done it. Read on. And if he have done it, that he do it no more. Mm -hmm. Admonish thy friend. It may be he have not said it. And if he have, that he speak it not again. Admonish a friend. For many times it is a slander. Many times it is slander. It's, it's uh, uh, miscommunication. You don't understand it, what actually took place. Admonish a friend. Maybe he had not done it. You know? Admonish a friend. For many times it is a slander. And believe not every tale. And believe not every tale. So let's go back. Uh, go back to Ecclesiastes. Go ahead. When it, what that last, read that last part again. Many times it is a slander. Uh, admonish a friend. For many times, it is a slander. Meaning somebody's trying to tell you that somebody said something or did something that they really didn't do. They slandering that person and they trying to, like the bishop brought up, put a bug in your hair, put a battery in your back to make you, you know what I'm saying, react a certain way. And most times it's because that person has something against that person and they want you to be against that person with them. So don't ever let anybody do it. But I'm gonna pull the scripture real quick, if you don't mind. Uh, Ecclesiastes 7 in the Bible. Ecclesiastes 7 and 21. Ecclesiastes was just saying. chapter 7, verse 21. Let thy soul love a Ecclesiastes. Oh, Steve. Chapter 7 and verse 21 in the Bible. Ecclesiastes chapter 7 verse 21 Also take no heed unto all words that are spoken Lest thou hear thy servant curse thee Don't take heed to everything that somebody tells you that somebody said Don't take heed to all words that are spoken Sometimes people speak hastily Read on For oftentimes also thy own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise has cursed others. Now what it's saying, don't take heed, meaning don't be so quick to get offended about every word that comes out of somebody's mouth. Remember, in some, remember in James we read, everybody offends with their tongue. Remember also what the scripture's telling you right here is, remember when you said something about somebody that you need not have said. Don't be so quick to go blow off the hinges at everything that you hear somebody say. Because remember, oftentimes, read that uh, verse 22 again. For oftentimes also thine own heart knoweth that thou thyself likewise has cursed others. Now everybody else might not know, but remember in your own heart, you know that it's been times that you done said stuff about other people. They might not know it, but you know. Somebody might not have... Uh, let your secret out when you was gossiping about the next man or whatever, but you know. So when you hear somebody saying something about you, don't be so quick to blow off the hinges. That's what they're saying. You had some answer? <laughs> Go to Ecclesiastes. Back, back to Ecclesiastes chapter 6. Ecclesiastes I, I believe six. we left off at verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 6 verse 9. And there is a friend who being turned to enmity and strife will discover thy reproach. Mm -hmm. Again, some friend is a companion at the table and will not continue in the day of thy affliction. That goes back to what we just read in verse 8. Same, saying the same thing. There's a friend at that table. Read on. But, but in thy prosperity he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy servants. And prosper, it said, but in prosperity he will be as thyself and will be bold over thy service. It's just because he's, he's, he's playing to be your friend just because of the position that you're in. Read on. If thou be brought low, he will be against thee and will hide himself from thy face. Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. The scriptures say, do what? Verse 13. Separate thyself from thy enemies 
and take heed of thy friends. Separate thyself from thine enemies and take heed to thy friends. What's the, what's the saying? What's the word tell you about your enemies? Oh, yeah. It's totally against what the scriptures say. Anybody know? About your enemies and your friends. How you, what you supposed to do with them? Who? Cleveland. Cleveland. Yeah, where's the mic? Phone. It ain't on. Turn it on, phone brothers. The light should turn green. Notice, and after he says it, put the read the read the scripture again. Go ahead. What's it say? Right. What they say? Keep your enemies closer than your friends. Yeah. What's the saying though? It's, it's, it's not quite the saying. Keep your friends close and your enemies closer. Now what does God say? Separate thyself from thy enemies and take heed of thy friends. Complete opposite. Complete opposite. <laughs> this whole world is against this Bible. Everything they say is contrary to what, even the term friend, that's taken out of uh, its text. Some of us call friends, friend is like, that we use that word so lightly, even the Bible tells you. Christ said, you know that you're my friends. I believe I'm quoting, I'm quoting it wrong. Uh, John. If is it John? Is, yes, it's go, John. Let's go to that real quick. John chapter 15, verse 14. Ye are my friends, if ye do whatsoever I command you. We don't? We don't. Henceforth I call you not servants, for the servant knoweth not what his Lord doeth. But I have called you friends, for all things that I have heard of my Father. I have made known unto you. Even Christ knew that there was a difference. Uh, uh, there was something heavy with that term friend. He used that word carefully. Okay, others that followed him, he didn't call them all friends. He said, some of them, I know you follow me because you've seen the miracles that I've done. These people, these are people he called uh, friends. They were the disciples. They believed on every word that he said. They'd done everything that he did. Uh, he told them to do. These were people, uh, people called friends by their actions, by their fruits, by their works. Not just say friend because you see them on a daily basis. Doing what he says being the whole Bible. Some of us, we hold our families up in high esteem to our worldly families like they mean something. I'm totally tell you all, if your mama, your grandmama, your sister, your brother, your auntie, your uncle don't keep the commandments, they are the devil. There's no nice way of saying it. I know it's grandma and she make the best sweet potato pie. She does, but she's an old devil. That's the point. And that doesn't mean she may not be nice to you, but it doesn't change. Christ said, who is my mother or my brother but those that do the will of my father which is in heaven? Some of you blur that line like, that's my mama, that's my sister, that's my brother. God doesn't deal with blood relations. That means nothing to him. That's overworldly mind. That's my friend since kindergarten. God doesn't give a damn about her in kindergarten, him in junior high school, on the same basketball team, both of you play football team. God does not care. That's our minds. So when that scripture says that those that do the will, the will is, the Bible says this, that's what I'm going to do. What we do is we somehow try to still mesh friends of the world, family of the world, and make it seem like they matter. My family is those that are keeping God's to the rest of them, to hell with them. Now, don't mind you, I still deal with my family members, like I'll speak to them, it's like that, but I'm not wrapped up in their world. And they're not wrapped up in my world, which they should be wrapped up in my world. They should be wrapped up in here. They want to they have something meaningful between us, come and be around us. Other than that, it hits, a, it hits the ceiling. I get around my worldly family, and I'll be honest with you, after a while I get uncomfortable because we're not doing the same things. The conversation is not the same thing. But if you find yourself comfortable around them, many years ago, Bishop McDaniel told me this. He said, he said, can I, he said can I, who the hell are you? Because I don't deal with people in the world. He said, I don't know who the hell you are. In other words, I was one play, I was one way when I was around the congregation, but I was in the world around them, I was somebody different. He said, I didn't know that person. Who the hell are you? You try to you try to hold on to the world and friend of the world and whatever. To the, and my wife just tell me, leave them, them dudes alone. What are you still dealing with them for? Now you know what you're talking about. Still having an affinity to them. They mean nothing. They're going to die. 
I mean, everybody understand it that you understand unless they repent, you know your mama's gonna die, right? And I mean die the death, the real death. So we gotta be able to come out of that mind, separate, subdue those thoughts of what we equate friends with. Do you know when you hold on to them, you are trimming your ways? Exactly. Exactly what it is. If you still hold on to them, you're trimming your ways, and I will put everything on it. You will fail. Today, today, tomorrow, 20 years, you will fail. Until you come to the realization they are not your friends. The Bible is very clear. If, in other words, to make it even simpler than that, if they're not teaching you to keep God's commandments and they themselves apply it, they can never be family or friends to you. I'm Elton Nathaniel, Israel United in Christ. YouTube likes to shut our channels down, as some of you have noticed, <laughs> ever so often. Subscribing to join IUIC will assure you will always stay connected to our YouTube accounts. We want to do our best to make sure this truth gets up. Please click and join our subscriber YouTube channel called Join IUIC to stay linked to all of our videos. So again, please make sure you subscribe to this and join IUIC channel to get your latest updates on all our YouTube channels. Shalom.